Hello, Tijuana. How are you? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Can you listen? Can you hear me? Can you listen to me? It's a pleasure to be here at Tal Talks. How are you doing here? How are you? What are you doing here? Uh, you are driving me. Could you get off this stage, please? No, I'm just kidding. The real truth is I was very excited to be here in Tijuana. I came here several times and I I was very excited to give a total speech. And, uh, but I was very upset because I had to prepare a 20-minute speech. But I was normally told that I give last usually one minute and a half. And here I have to extend myself. In fact, I already I have spent 20 seconds in that joke. But... Uh, Already, uh, I'm gonna introduce myself for that uh, for, for for them who don't know me. I'm gonna introduce myself for them. I'm Omar Chaparro, and uh, for those who already know me, I'm also uh, in. Um, I'm Omar Chaparro, and I'm those who already know me. I'm also Omar Chaparro, and, and well, I'm from Chihuahua. Who? Who here is from Chihuahua? Are there people from Chihuahua? Yes. Get out here from get out from here, please. Because this is from Tijuana. I have 20 years. Uh, I'm joking. Like uh, Gloria Tevez says, like uh, the joke that uh, it's ah, uh, it's not true. Every of us we have a friend who says something about after that. Say it, it's not true. For any, uh, for example, it's, it works. It works like an shock absorber to, to say something that really. The really heavy is is it's like the joke uh, a daughter to her to her father. Daddy, I'm pregnant, and after that, she says, "Ah, no, it's not true." But the father replies, "I don't care. I I don't give a shit. You're adopted. Ah, it's not true." But well, let's be serious. Let let's be serious. I'm a business administrator, I'm an actor, a comedian, an announcer, a host radio, motorcycles, I have done a parole, I have been clover, waiter, tacos, tacos maker, pizza maker, pizza delivery driver, I got in clothes business, in peanut business, I have three children with my wife, Lucy, we have 17 years married, and I have done movies, television, radio shows basically like Jose Jose I have walked from here to there basically and nowadays I live in the California city in Los Angeles and I have the intention to focus my career on movies and I have done movies uh, straight of those what what is uh, I have done four I have done a movie straight from almost f for four movies. One of the one of these are what is he like? Or uh, another in Spain that calls "Don't Be Mean Frida" too. I did an Spanish movie, "The Rodriguez and Beyond with. Rosie de Palma and Miss Chaplin. I have, I have just filmed a movie, also a movie in London, that it calls Detective Pikachu, with Ryan Reynolds. And the truth is, is I have been living a good moment, a uh, good streak. Some of you will say it looks so easy. He's just, uh, he's just good luck. But it's a matter of fact that this is what I am here to say that to you that is not easy and the good luck doesn't exist. And also I want to share three tools that I use and how this this helped me a lot with this process in the way that this can be less difficult and to make that on its on insistent luck in some way you call build it. Um, I'm going back in the time when I was 11 years old, I was so little and short, shorter. Sometimes somebody could say, is, is, is he really 
his name or just the the uh, somebody will say could say is is it really his name or is just the it his, his nickname so is is my last name okay and I was 11 years old my father mr Omar Chaparro, a man raised up in chihuahua he was imposing tall he wore he wore this heavy jeans and when he took off these jeans and the jeans stayed there upright and when he addresses to me he always said said junior he said and he named he named he named me with that name he said junior right now uh, right now 43 years old and he is still can be call me junior and my father always scratched scratched about when he said junior for i don't know for the damning fault or i don't know for instance what's your name somebody ever has told that way to you in that like that gabriela not Okay, and one day my father, when I was 11, when I was 11 years old, my father owned a transport truck and he put me to clean this truck. And I remember when I finished to cl clean it up, I, as I cool, my father came out and he said, Junior, and I said, what, what's up, daddy? What's wrong, Daddy? Oh, of mine. And he responded, Junior, remember the lazy word twice. And at that time, I didn't understand what he meant to say, but what I, he meant to say it was the truck was not cleaning as the one he wanted and his expectation. So I had to clean it up again till this truck was parking clean. But then I understood that clearly that we had to do the excellent things from the start. Because if you don't, it's gonna be much more difficult. Because effectively, the lazy word twice. This is really kept the stick in my my mind. Those words that my father said. For instance, Gravella, is that, is that you? I'm gonna make a question. Let let put you in this way. What will be easier for you if you are training for the Chicago Marathon? That is, you're gonna be held I mean, for two four months. But not, but not, not the next this year. The, the next year, I it's an hypothetical fact. This is another parallel universe, of course. Uh, of course, I know that you don't run. You don't run. You you look very athletic. And Gabriela, well, what will be easier for you? Uh, wake up at the Saturday at. The, 10 a.m. Dress in pajamas. Prepare some pancakes, bacon, uh, lactose-free milk, your cappuccino, and go uh, go back to the bacon again. Or wake up at the 5 a.m. to train outside with a cold temperature, running 10 kilometers on the street. Would that will be easier for you? Of course, the pancakes and wake up at 10 11. But uh, that will be easier, but according to my father's philosophy, if you don't wake up at the train 5 a.m. when you are in the marathon in in the 8 kilometer, you're gonna be throwing throwing up your long long tongue from from your mouth and you're gonna be dying because uh, you are not prepared in and in the moment you will you will have been were waking up at uh, 5 a.m. You will understand that the easy, the easiest, the easiest was waking up at 5 a.m. Then you are gonna understand that the lazy works twice. We need for run for this marathon for for have a career for get a job to to have this abundance. We have to get up from your comfort zone. I call this problem go against your or laziness or idleness nature. This is something that makes us laugh, but this is true. Everybody came here because it doesn't care if you were born in Tijuana or somewhere else. We have in our DNA 
this problem lacing is natural that is implicit implicit in the last because it's all gonna be all, always gonna be easier to stay there in the house tangle legs and cuddle with your girlfriend than the saying what watching videos on or TV than on bail studying and working all the night all the night long working till 5 a.m. and that place in his nature is what makes us are the responsible to make to take the decision in our lives. This is that little voice that says, Don't wake up, the sheets are so comfy and warmer. Have you heard it? That little voice that says, Let's go drink tomorrow, just cheat and copy to test from your friend, intelligent friend tomorrow. And that is so real. This is a little voice like the three. Mexican light that the Mexican says. For example, the first, the last, I drink, the last drink, and we go. Tomorrow I will tell you, and just the tip. I don't like it, but it is real. Um, I started to work on on a radio, in a radio show in Chihuahua, Chihuahua, in 1996, and I began this career without any payment or salary. This was a morning show from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m. After that, I went to study in my career. This lasted one year in, in that way and was horrible. But we initially became famous. We used to go to the schools and the people tore down our shirts. So they were exciting, saying, and then the visitors, and that we call the, the the radio show. We call the visitors. I ended ended my career in 2000, and I say to my parents, "Mom, Dad, I'm ready. Uh, I have to go because uh, now if, if somebody nowadays wants to be famous or have a success in the show business media, the people today just could upload a video on internet and Instagram and YouTube and it could be viral and you can make it. Before, some 20 years ago, you had to take your backpack and go to the capital and that's what I did. And I went, I went there and I remember that I said to my mother, and I expected those words from my mother that put support or comfort his son or something like, achieve your dream, so don't let somebody stop you. And I swear my mother instead of that said something that was quite strange and something that I can comprehend already. This was, she said, Junior, be careful with the homosexual because they are so very rancorous and resentful. And I can't figure out what she was thinking about to point across the reflection, but in her mind, but in her peace and mind from Chihuahua, she will have said, There in Mexico City, the actor, the actress, the homosexual, RGS, rivalries, they fuck my son. And that's what she thought. And my, my father didn't say anything, just said, Junior. Junior, remember the lazy works twice. And the thing is that I went, I moved to the city, I um to the to the city. I came there, of course. Obviously, I had left a radio show, TV program, a film producer where we used to make make uh, commercials, advertisements, and I left off a government salary where they paid me for the commercials, for their advertisements. So logically, when I renounce to all this, everybody says, you are not. Why are you going there, the city? Don't be fool. But I had like what you have already, this motivation uh, to make um, this motivation. And I was looking forward to do something the desire to make uh, something with my life, to stand out, to be better, to grow up. I went to get there and, and I did. I arrived to Mexico City and I promise you to you that I saw these highways and the first thing that I made was weep and cry. Believe me, I was crying behind a traffic light and I said, what I have done? Everybody selling pambazos and chiclangos selling 
come on, take you buy your sh come on and buy you t-shirts for the concert and all the noise and those those buildings were not like the Chihuahua shorts buildings those were those are in the city were skyscrapers pollution contamination there were not chilacos chilacos for 81 a kilo uh, a kilogram and I told to myself what the hell I have done what error I have done and then after that I rented and after that I rented two little rooms to lodge in I recall my sister came to my place and she began to cry and I said why are you crying she replied your room are so tiny and ugly and and that was my life for all those months I used to sleep um, on the television side walls and I work as an extra and I did everything I played a role as um, executive executive uh, from Televisa Televisa Multimedios uh, on the phone to give self recommendations and I said uh, I put forward Omar Chaparro, she's very smart and in that and I made 1001 stupid things with a purpose they could give me an opportunity because I really yearned to be in television and in, in six months I didn't have enough money and I had run out almost went away all my money and and uh, and something else, I was losing much more. Imp I was losing some much more important than money. This was the hope, and I had anything. I began to feel depressed, and I received a phone call from my mother, and then she said, "How is it? How is it going, Junior?" I said, "Quite well." And cleaning up my tears, and I said, I went to Televisa, and she said, he went to Televisa, he went to Televisa, he's in Televisa, he's working in Televisa, yes, I, I, I want to, I, I went there to open the doors, and uh, I didn't want that my mother could see me blue, I had, um, and in despair, the thing is, with the little money left, I, with a little, with a li little money left, I bought a plastic bag, plenty of fruit, and I disguised myself as a little old lady, a role play that I used to pers personify in Natal Chihuahua, where I was born, and I got to Televisa, and I knock, knock out the knock, knock the door, the cable to the door of the cable channel telehit, and. The security, security guards came out and opened up the doors, of course. You can imagine how do they look like. Tall, 9.9 9, 9 meters, very tall, blue eyes. And they spoke, they respond, what do you want? And I swear that I was uh, dressed as an old lady with a, my little plastic bag of plenty of fruits and I didn't have any money. This did broke and and not even to go back again to Chihuahua and I knew that this was my, my last shot and I replied I'm the producer's grandmother and I brought his breakfast for the producer for the producer and what do you think that happened they closed me the door under my face and I turned around and I was going to do what I had done all the, the last three months that I was just crying and I crossed a uh, in my way with the producer who was a daughter Maron and I I told him I'm your grandmother take this gift and he said something that I'll never forget that he said you're very you're pretty odd bizarre whimsical and eccentric quirky freakish and he got me a job in Telehit and there began to do television shows there I started my career in the big leagues in in the television show we call black and white. Does anybody remember it? And the question is, why does this happen to me? Why does this happen to me? This happened to me for three reasons. One, it was for my. What well, the first is that I was out of of my 
comfort zone and I was out of my laziness nature. If I hadn't gone out from my comfort zone, I would never have moved from Chihuahua or Mexico or, or disguised myself as a little old lady. And the other reason why this happened to me, I had visualized it because I had said to my mother on December of 2000, I'll be there in Mexico. And in three months, I'll be there working on television. And my mother said, no, nah, but it was sexual. I said, just calm down. It's true. But um, it's true. And I said to her in three years, I made so much noise that in every corner that you are going to hear you in every corner in, in every in three years, I, I swear to you, I was um, winning the reality, reality show of Big Brother that it was a successful a, a phenomenon for itself. The things happened always two times, first in our minds and after in reality. It has to be like that. We have to imagine pretty good things. Like Chicharito said, it's like if you don't have... A, can we imagine good things? It's like if you don't have a plan to, to get success, immediately you have a schedule to get that success. So you have to visualize it. Um, you have to visualize it. This is works. And the third reason why this happened to me. Uh, uh, the third reason, the third tool is, um, do you know who is Buster Douglas? You don't know him, right? He's a boxer. Who said that? Go away, please. No, just kidding. Very well. This happened to me because I had a why. I had hungry, desire. Tony Robbins says, change is not a matter of ability, it's a matter of motivation. This means the improvement, the improvement, well, not in the ability, but the faith and desperation. Have you, have you lived when you are motivated and you feel nothing could stop us? I was hungry. I was the thirsty. My wife was uh, that I had promised to my girlfriend, my wife now, and I was going to. I, I promised that I was going back for her, and we are going to to marry. To marry, and I couldn't fail. This pledge. This was my wife, Buster Douglas. You mentioned him. Perhaps you don't. You not not many now know him, but you know Mike Tyson, one of the best of the heavyweight boxers uh, of the times, and it was first. And nobody had defeated Buster, and Buster had to fight against him. Mike Tyson, obviously, the statistics were against him, against boxers, and all the statistics were in the favor of Mike Tyson and in the 8th round Buster was losing the fight terribly badly Mike Tyson knocked him down and Buster fell down and started the countdown 5 4 3 3 and this guy in the ring boxing cameras uh, laid with a wide eye because he hit like a meal kick 3 2 he stood up. Never in the story a boxer who had fought with Mike Tyson and had knockout had a story up before. And the fight was going to start again. But the truth is that Buster was subdued. But Buster just stood and and Mike knew that and Mike went after him and but the bell rang and Buster was bailed out for a miracle and and the, and for a miracle. And then began the ninth round, and again, Buster was against the ropes, uh, against the lion, Mike Tyson. And I think everybody of us, we have been there against the ropes, suffering, battered, injured, injured. As a matter of fact, could you, could you as a matter of fact, um, uh, could you raise your hand up, hands up? Who of you haven't cried? As a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, could you raise your hands up? 
who of you haven't cried in your room? Everybody of us have cried in our intentions. Everybody, we have been against the rope because they expelled from school, because they fire, because I divorced, because I, my dad is alcoholic, because I had an accident, because I had a car crash, because some of love have passed away, but we have been there disappointed with, with pain, sad, crying. I suggest you. The next time when you are against the ropes, try to emulate what Buster did. He never quite to punch and never let down and never quite to fight. He always kept fighting and Buster knockout and finally Buster knockouted. Knockout Mike Tyson. Nobody could believe it that Buster Douglas had gotten uh, knock knocking had uh, gotten knocking out had defeated Mike Tyson and in a and Buster was interviewed with this question how could you get it and he, he how did you defeat it and he replied that the answer is straightforward and my mother uh, the answer is my mother had told everybody in the village uh, 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 my mother had told everybody that I was going to defeat Mike Tyson and my mother said my son my own mother my own mother they were my own mother and my son my mother were the relatives and they were also from Chihuahua and, and then and and she said, my junior is going to knock out Mike Tyson because mm, because uh, because um, because he's homosexual and rancorous. My mother said was going was going to defeat. My mother said that I was going to for the fight, so I made a promise, or I die in the ring, or I stand up in the. Or I stand up and lie for her. His why was much more bigger than Tyson, much more than statistics. And I don't know what are your project or your goal, but just just be sure that your why can be much more bigger than everything. The bigger than wake up at uh, 5 a.m., bigger than every pretext, every excuse. This is this why can motivate you, move you that you. This is why it can be much more bigger when you are on the boxing ring canvas because God forbid nobody wants but uh, nobody wants that but um, you're gonna be there. Life is hard and it's gonna be it's, it's very painful and the life is gonna going to put you there and when you are there your why should be you are, must be much more bigger than that make you stand up again to win the fight. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'm Omar Chaparro. Good night.